If you followed my first two videos, we should have a lot done by now. I got 38 blocks done. Just by doing the large blocks first, that gets so much fabric out of the way, makes a lot of progress quickly, and it's a really good way to practice on the larger pieces before you get into the smaller, more detailed pieces. So let's dive into those now, and then we'll be done with our quilt soon. We're over halfway there. The first thing you need is an emotional support paperweight. Once you have that in place, you can start cutting out your smaller pattern pieces. Now our larger pattern pieces we dealt with in a previous video, so if you haven't watched that, I recommend going back to watch that first. Your smaller pattern pieces, we're gonna cut out and file into the book we made previously. Now remember, I'm making two quilts at once, so you'll see me here pinning the duplicate pages together. You will not need to do this step. You will just simply cut your pattern pieces apart and file them in the book. Let's get to that. You do not need to cut out precisely at this point. We will at some point, after sewing our fabric on, cut on the seam allowance. But now, do not bother with taking the time to cut precisely. It will be done later. I really like to use a bin of some sort to keep my pattern pieces together while I'm cutting. So I love these scrapbooking bins. They're clear, they snap tight, and I can just throw everything in there while I'm cutting and then organize from there. That was a lot of cutting, but now that we're done, we can go back to our book and start filing. So you'll just pick up your pattern piece one at a time, find the number one position, and file it accordingly. The kits come with diagrams of the full finished quilt. You can see it here that's actually flipped open, and I love using that to mark off my completed blocks. You can see the progress we've made so far by completing the largest blocks first, and then moving on to the smaller ones, but this is a lot of blocks we completed already. Okay, I think you get the idea here. I'm going to continue to file all of my pieces, and I really wanna work through all of my pieces at the same time. You do not have to. You can choose to work with just a small portion of your pattern pieces, and once those are done, go back and get another small portion. But I'm going to file all of my pieces so that I can get the most work done at once. Let's speed this up and get it done. Once all of my pieces are filed, I will just turn to the first page in the book and start cutting. Now I did cover the cutting process for the larger pieces in the previous video, so if you haven't watched that, I do recommend going back and watching that, or if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. I love the quick progress this makes because when you file your pieces, you get a bunch of pieces on one page and it just makes it so quick to cut that fabric for those pieces. Once all of my positions one and two fabrics are cut, I will take them to the sewing machine and sew those. Once one and two is sewn, I will trim and iron all in big piles. And again, it's completely up to you how much of an assembly line you wanna make out of this or if you just wanna handle it a pile at a time, that's perfectly okay. So once they're sewn, cut, ironed, I will file them back in the book according to position number three and continue on from there. As I complete my sections, I add them to a binder where I've put the assembly guide. So each assembly guide gets a page and I can just add the tiny pieces onto that page so I don't worry about losing anything. You may have noticed my sections are not trimmed on the seam allowance at this point. We'll take care of that in a later step. Once all of my sections are completed, I can start assembling the blocks. I use the pin and point method to assemble sections and make sure that I get perfect points each time. I put a pin in through the point on the bottom section and up through the corresponding point on the top section. And then I do the same thing at the other end of the seam that I'm sewing. These two pins need to stay perpendicular to the paper and parallel to each other. So if they point off in different directions or they skew a little bit, adjust the alignment of the sections. The next thing I'll do is pin right on that sewing line and check to make sure that it is in the same position on the back of that seam. Once I've got it pinned and make sure that everything lines up, I can remove the first perpendicular pin and start sewing. The pin that is at the other end of that sewing line, I leave in until I get close enough that it needs to be taken out. That helps me make sure that everything is still aligned as I sew. As long as that pin stays straight up and down, I know that everything is aligned on the top and the bottom. As I sew the sections together, I remove the paper from the seam allowances before trimming and ironing. This helps to remove bulk along the way and makes it a little bit easier of a process and you don't have to remove the tiny, tiny pieces later. 
So tear off your seam allowance paper. And then I just trim with scissors because the seam allowance does not have to be a perfect straight line. You know essentially what a quarter inch looks like. So I just trim it and I usually iron my seam allowances open. I sew all of my sections together using the numbered assembly guide steps that are included in the kit. Once all of my sections are sewn together and I've completed all of my blocks, I go ahead and trim my blocks on the seam allowance. Then I assemble my blocks using the pin and point method again. I will also pin at critical intersections or points that need to match up perfectly. You can choose to sew your blocks together either in rows or columns as is traditionally done, or the guide in the kit includes a really nice method of sewing blocks into larger blocks and then sewing those blocks together in the full kit. That's completely up to you, but I do like blocks into blocks and it just keeps things a little more manageable than just sewing long rows. While removing paper from the seam allowances, tweezers can be a very helpful tool to get any small little pieces of paper out of hard to reach areas. I also like to tear the paper from any sharp points so that when I iron open later, I don't have to worry about pulling that sharp point of paper out from under the seam allowance. Once your blocks are sewn together, your quilt is done. I really encourage you to jump in and get started. Don't be afraid, just enjoy the process.